a new workplace wellness app is hoping to reduce the stress in your life. Developers say it's the first app of its kind. Then a closer look at artificial intelligence. Will it deliver on promises without compromise? Finally, Mensa, the club for those with higher IQs. Is the age of acceptance into the club artificially high? This is DMS English News with Oren Andrade. The smartphone app called Pulse is being termed the fit bit of corporate America and is due to be launched next month. It's already demonstrated results, including a 14% decrease in anxiety, a 10% decrease in stress, an 8% decrease in burnout, and an 11% increase in resilience. Stress-related apps are already out on the market, but what are their capabilities? Did you know that the growth of your company is directly related to the health of your employees? Too many sick leaves? Lower energy levels? All these indicate a weak workforce. So, what are you doing about it? Today's workforce needs more than gym memberships, health insurances, and checkups to live a healthy lifestyle. The difference with Pulse is that it uses stress and heart rate variability to get a true measure of stress-related factors or events. It categorizes these events and ties them to specific times which allow the user to decipher their true cause. Find out about the features and benefits in the description below. Technology has always been a double-edged sword. While it can promise to make our lives easier, it often comes at a cost or compromise. First, let's take a look at the promise. In the age of fake news, and even in the world at large, we hear bias. One form of bias is what Cheryl Adkinson, formerly with CBS News, calls astroturf and manipulation of media messages. She walks us through an example. Say you're watching the news and you see a story about a new study on the cholesterol-lowering drug called Colextra. The study says Colextra is so effective that doctors should consider prescribing it to adults and even children who don't yet have high cholesterol. Is it too good to be true? You're smart, you decide to do some of your own research. You do a Google search, you consult social media, Facebook and Twitter, you look at Wikipedia, WebMD, a nonprofit website, and you read the original study in a peer-reviewed published medical journal. It all confirms how effective Colextra is. You do run across a few negative comments and a potential link to cancer, but you dismiss that because medical experts call the cancer link a myth and say that those who think there is a link there are quacks and cranks and nuts. Finally, you, you learn that your own doctor recently attended a medical seminar. The lecture that he attended confirmed how effective Colextra is, so he sends you off with some free samples and a prescription. You've really done your homework. But what if all isn't as it seems? What if the reality you found was false? A carefully constructed narrative by unseen special interests designed to manipulate your opinion. If the goal is to have artificial intelligence decipher any bias in the news, that would improve our life. But what's the compromise? In Greek mythology, dating back about 2,500 years, there's the story of how the god of technology creates an artificial giant to protect the island of Crete. Ancient Chinese literature from around the same time includes the tale of an inventor who builds a mechanical man. Ever since, the idea has inspired storytellers. Also, scientists have tried for centuries to invent intelligent machines. But it wasn't until the mid-20th century that the rise of computers gave the field such a push that during a workshop in 1956, researchers coined the term artificial intelligence. And just a few years later, Nobel Prize winner Herbert A. Simon predicted that machines will be capable within 20 years of doing any work that a man can do.
Look how well AI understands images. Where was this picture taken? It was taken in a school. How many mirrors are there? At least two. What's the person standing on? The person is standing on a rug. He's standing on a scale. I think you are right. What is he doing? He is looking at the scale. Where is Obama's foot positioned? On the right side of the scale. What happens as a result? The scale shows a higher weight. Is the person on the scale aware of it? I think he is not. Do you think that's why people are laughing? I think so. Google is a corporate system that exists in the larger American corporate system. Sundar Pichai cares. Um, Jeff Dean cares. All of the individual people at Google care. It's the systemic processes that are protecting business interests over human concerns that create this pervasive environment of irresponsible technology development. Intelligent quotient is the measure of a person's reasoning ability. And Mensa is a society for those with higher IQs. It started in 1946 with an artificial beginning as an aristocracy of the intellect. However, intellect has no bias. Soon members from the working class gained entry. And it goes without saying that gender and age are not discriminated against either. Off of some simple words and she sounded them out. Not long after that, she was reading. Peter eats a bad banana. She, she was reading at a kindergarten level already at two. So I said, let's, let's see what's going on here. Let's see how smart this kid is. So the McNabs took Isla to a psychiatrist who suggested she take an IQ test. So he said that usually they don't give IQ tests to young children, especially two years old, because they're just all over the place. But after hearing of Isla's achievements, the doctor gave Isla the test anyway. She scored in the 99th percentile. And at the age of two, Isla is now the youngest member inducted into Menza. We're hoping that, that she can have some friends, we'll go to conventions, uh, they have scholarships. There's more news to cover on disinformation. Be sure to check us out in our next broadcast.